Welcome my friends, welcome to another aimless adventure. Coming to you from the city that never sleeps. Or something like that, Las Vegas, Nevada. Anyway, I'm on Eastern, near Rawhide. And why am I standing in front of somebody else's house? Well, because this was the home of Red Fox. And we're gonna go explore a little bit of the property until we get kicked out or arrested or both at the same time. I think it's time we get on to it before that takes place. Let's do it. And this is where it all went down. Right here on Rawhide and Eastern. It's a nice touch. I saw a couple things right off the get-go. Not only do you have this nice red walkway, which is super cool, but I think somebody may actually have a functioning business in here. But also check that out. I noticed that driving by, there's a little red fox there. That's a nice little tribute. I don't know if they'll allow us to film. I don't even know if anybody's here. But there is something else that my uncle told me about years ago. Let me see if it's still here. Sure enough, there it is. It's hard to see through the tagging, but it does say Red Fox 1969 right there. So when the IRS was shaking them down, they were all over here. This is like the main driveway. Um, a lot of this stuff has changed. Like this wasn't like this back then. This parking lot that's set up for a business and all that. And there was a pool back here, if I do recall. I think there was another building right there. I, I don't know if that building came later or if there were two buildings, but there was some type of like pool house or something over here. And then, uh, so all this here was a backyard. Now, there's power on. I hear it running. And I just checked the water spigot and that's going too. But, um, yeah, this building's been around for a while. I, I don't know if he was the original owner of this building or not, but it, this has been a, this is an older neighborhood near Eastern and uh, Rawhide. Uh, you've got like the airport connector down there in a quindo. You can see the airport sign. And um, so where we watched it, we watched it go down. We were over in this area right over here. I used to work for an overnight freight company and we were down Warm Springs that way. And I ended up coming up this way every day to, you know, get the freight uh, from McCarran Airport over there. A matter of fact, they wiped out a whole there was an entire um, neighborhood over there they wiped out. They took this entire neighborhood, wiped it out, and um, widened for the airport connector and all that other stuff that they were building for the, for the future of McCarran Airport. So right behind me is where we would just kind of travel every day, and uh, traffic's never gotten any better. But we were hanging out over there watching it go down, and the IRS was like right in here in the driveway and stuff. We didn't, I didn't know it was the IRS at the time until later the news started uh, talking about the shakedown that was going on for back taxes and all that and a significant amount of taxes so whether you're Red Fox or Wesley Snipes or who knows they're going to get you they're going to find you so before we get booted let's see what's over in this area it's interesting they haven't used that type of uh, cinder blocking in a long time, so that's probably original to this property is my guess And it probably was a wall at one point somewhere on property and it's repurposed There's no doubt this is original stuff Back in the day they there, obviously it was a window right there But Vegas was all about these rocks, which doesn't make, really make any sense to me I mean, I know I've lived here for freaking 30 years on and off but why would you want rocks which heat up unless they actually help keep it cool? I don't know. Old school putt-putt stuff. I don't know. A lot of people in the 90s did all this, but I don't know. This may have been around previous because it looks like maybe this was a, I don't know if this was a screened-in patio or whatnot. That roof needs some love. But uh, looks like some Skinners try to get into that thing and that door so I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be 
caught on camera getting close to that thing. Be like, that's the dude that tried to break into Red Fox's old place. That's a newer unit, but check that crusty thing out right there. They used to run swamp coolers in Vegas. Uh, as a matter of fact, some places still do. Um, I don't know that it really helps when it's a buck twelve, honestly. Yeah. They shook him down for everything. He used to have, uh, he had Model T's, Model A's, I think. He had a handful of old school, like way old cars. I can't remember which ones they are. I think Model T was one of them. But um, down the road here, um, we'll go down there in a minute. There was a Fred G. Sanford store. And it was pretty cool because they actually had out in front, they had the Sanford and Son truck or at least a truck that was identical to it with the logo on the side and everything. But um, it was out in front. I don't know what's there now. There may be like a cash loan place or something like that, or maybe a convenience store. I'm, I'm really not sure of the exact address, but I remember it was near the corner of uh, Eastern and Warm Springs. So I'll do my best to point it out. I know I can find photo because there was a video on YouTube um, and it showed like him wandering around in the store. The thing was, the Sanford, Sanford and Sons store, the Fred G. Sanford store, he was selling all his own stuff. Like, it wasn't really a junk shop, it was his stuff. So when you went in there, and I only went in there one time, and I didn't spend much time in there at all, and I really wish I would have now. And back in the day, we weren't running around taking selfies, so. You know, it was like click, roll, 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 and see what you get when you get it developed. But um, he would sell off all his old stuff, his own stuff rather, to try and raise coin. I mean, it was sad. But he was super cool. Um, I never got to meet him. But he was in there a lot. And, uh, so there. It's kind of cool that they got the red door going. Here's that means something totally different. And in this case, it means Red Fox. Let's go take a look at that sign out front. I don't know, I'll knock at the door. I'm saving that for the end in case they book me. There's probably, I don't know, tens of thousands of cars that go down this road every day. And I bet you most of them have no idea what that little red fox means. But there it is. You can see the side that gets beat down by the sun. I guarantee you, he has no idea who Red Fox is. There's the other side, where the sun has not cornholed it to oblivion. And there's the address if you're looking for it. 5460 Southeastern in Las Vegas, on the corner of Eastern and Rawhide. The sun is so hot already, it shut my camera off after 15 minutes. I hate you, Las Vegas, and your evil heat. And now's the time on sprockets when we dance. And get kicked out, if anyone's here. Let's see. I don't know. So this is the exact location of where the Fred G. Sanford store used to be. It's now a rapid cache. I was pretty sure they had changed the building out. And you can tell by this angle right here. I want you to notice a couple things. Now this awning up at the top of the building, that covers one of the telephone poles in the picture that I'm about to show you. This telephone pole right here is there. The rhododendrons are kind of blocking the, the side of the building that's right there. But take notice of that window right there. See the window that's, that's uh, horizontal and then the, what appears to be a door that's upright because doors don't lay down. Good one, Chris. Anyways, so the telephone pole right there. Now check it out. Notice this telephone pole as we go around the corner, and it's got that T-top. All right, right there. That's how I know 
that this is the exact spot. Those two telephone poles and this, I could not find an address anywhere online, but I was able to line up this building and those two telephone poles that are right there and this one right here. I don't think the cash people care that we're back here, but that's it. So this is the property of the old Fred G. Sanford store. This is, this is where he sold off his possessions, right here. Now, I'm kind of thinking that this is the same building. Like, I think they put a facade on it, but I don't think that they changed out the structure itself. I'm gonna ask inside, see if anybody even knows. I, I have a feeling they don't, but kind of cool. We got Red's house right up the road. I wonder if this gate's original. This might be an original gate. That's weird that it has that. That's strange. Boy, and it's got like a Asian type metal iron working on it. But this is it. This is where and the truck was right out there. It was right out there. This wasn't all, you know, done up like this. There wasn't even a gas station over there. There was none of that crap over there. Um, don't recall if Circle K was there or not. Been eating pizza at that joint for too many years. But anyway, the, um, the truck used to be sitting right out here. The Sanford and Son truck was right there. And sadly, on October 11th, 1991, in Southern California while filming a television show, Red Fox collapsed. And co-stars thought, he's just pulling a prank. That's what he does. He was known for doing stuff like that. So they said, Delores' co-star said, get up, Red, get up. And she thought he was just clowning. But this time he wasn't clowning. When paramedics got there, they ended up pronouncing him dead. Took him to a nearby hospital. And uh, I don't know if they're able to revive him on the way there or when he got to the hospital. But uh, they were able to revive him. And he stayed alive for another few hours. I think it was like uh, three or four hours he stayed alive. And uh, so... That was it, that was such a tragic ending and he was so broke. I remember standing at Eastern and Rawhide here in Las Vegas, cause I worked right down the street. And my uncle said, that's Red Fox. And he was standing out in front and there was cameras there, news crews, and uh, he was like standing, <laughs> he was standing in his briefs, which was, I mean, you could imagine how distraught he was because the IRS was just shaking him down. And uh, so that was, that was the last time I ever saw Red um, alive. So it was a weird time. I had just gotten here from the East Coast and uh, that was one of my first experiences in Las Vegas. And here's the grave of Mr. Red Fox. Now, Red was so broke when he passed away uh, that he couldn't even afford his own funeral. As a matter of fact, Eddie Murphy paid for it. And then they asked, you know, they, they had asked him uh, prior to his passing, you know, why didn't you reach out to friends and, and let them know of this IRS deal? And he said, well, I didn't, you know, basically I didn't think they were going to clamp down on me the way they did. But they, they sure did. It was, it was quite a scene. I mean, they were, they had vans out front, trucks out front. They were pulling stuff out of that place, left and right. And uh, that was, I could only imagine how, how infuriating it was, or depressing, or both, for Mr. Fox, um, just being a passerby, you know, on the clock, stopping on the side of the road to watch it take place for a few minutes. It was kind of terrifying to me that 
the taxationist theft crew would just shake them down the way they did. Yeah, he could be raunchy at times, but from everyone that I've read that knew him, they said Red Fox was an incredibly, incredibly generous man. And that's it. Red Fox's gravesite. That was a crazy day there on southeastern, the corner of Rawhide and Eastern, when all that went down. Weird. Weird how life goes sometimes. You never know. Well, not the most chipper vlog in the world. However, hopefully you learned a little something about Mr. Red Fox. And, uh, Get on your Googler and maybe catch some of his uh, old Sanford and Sons show. That was uh, one of my favorite shows growing up as a kid. There wasn't a whole bunch uh, to watch in the 70s on TV, so I grew up on stuff like All in the Family and the Jeffersons and um, Mork and Mindy later. I think they came later. And Sanford and Son. Love me some Sanford and Son. <laughs> Grady was probably my favorite character outside of Fred. So, uh, yeah, Fred G. Sanford. Yep, that's it. Until next time, adventure on. Come on, you big dummies, let me out. <laughs>